Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today I'm going to do my first cook in the Gourmet GMC 680. Um, I got this the other day and I did an unboxing. Check out that video um, in the list below. Um, but this is an all encompassing uh, multi cooker, 11 modes, and one of them is a sous vide bath. So, what I'm going to do is do my first cook in it. And if you guys are interested, check out the video on the unboxing of this unit. I'm going to do a complete review. Once I do some more cooks in this thing, I'm going to try out, first of all, the sous vide, of course, to see how this, uh, how this works. I've never used a dedicated bath. I've always used the immersion circulator, so it'll be interesting to see how this works. One of the things I can tell you is that, you know, you are going to have a... Uh, disparage uh, uh, problem because of the size. I mean, you don't need to have the water circulating in this unit because it's like a crock pot. It's heating from all sides, so it doesn't need to spin the water around through the uh, heating element to keep the water hot. So it doesn't need the circulation. So. Um, there's other units that are dedicated to sous vide, like the sous vide supreme you can see on Amazon and stuff that are similar, where it, it just heats the water from all sides so it doesn't need a circulator. So that's one of the things, but um, that is limited in the size. So you can't put a big brisket or racks of ribs in here unless you cut them up. And like I said, you know, you're just going to be dealing with just a limited size of what you can actually put in here. But the cook I'm going to do today is something I've cooked before on video, but this one I'm going to actually going to do a little longer. Um, this is top round steaks, uh, also known as London broil, which are usually very tough. They're very lean and very tough. Um, so usually you have to cook them for a long time, or you have to, you know, slice them a certain way, cut them up, slice them very thin when they're done, so that they you can actually chew them up. But I'm going to do 48 hours on these in the sous vide bath at 135. I did 26 hours on these before, 24, 26 hours before. And they came out kind of like a sirloin um, as far as tenderness goes. But these at 48 should come out like a, a filet. They should be very tender. They should be, you can put a fork through it. Um, I've cooked them at that length before, and that's how they come out. And at 135, they're still going to be nice and you know, medium to medium rare-ish, uh, and, and pretty juicy. So I've got this set up already at 135 for 48, and uh, all I have to do is hit start, and it'll go. I already got the water set in here, and I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And like I said, the good thing I can see about this little unit is if it's something like three or four steaks or some chicken breasts or, you know, a pork tenderloin or something small, you don't need to fill up a whole big bath like I did, uh, do with most of my cooks. So, and it comes with these racks and this particular rack, it's a roast rack and you can flip it over and it's a steaming rack where you can set something up and it keeps it way off the bottom where it could get steamed. But I can also use it, turn it upside down like this and put it on top of this meat and make sure that it keeps it under the water. Because when I put the lid on, it will make sure that that meat stays, it doesn't rise up. Because the rack will keep it down. It'll hit the lid and it'll keep it under the water. So I'm going to go ahead and get these started. And I will see you guys. I'm just going to let it sit there for 48 hours. I may come back and check on it just to see how the evaporation of the water is doing. Which I don't see much of an issue. There is this little hole here that lets out some steam. So we might have a little bit of evaporation. But I check on it, you know, every 12 hours or so, just when I'm walking by, just to make sure we should be fine. So, all right, I'm going to get this thing started, and um, we'll see you guys back in the yeah, I just wanted to show you this uh, panel here, um, show you how it's got the different uh, modes, bake, saute, roast, sous vide. See how that little arrow is on the sous vide function, um, which you have to make sure is that thing will flash after you set your time and temp it will be flashing until you hit that start stop button again and make it to where that little arrow is not flashing or it won't start so that little arrow is flashing it won't uh, 
go at the time and temple just sit there believe me i let it sit there for like four minutes before i realized that so <laughs> so just make sure that the little arrow there on the uh, cv or whatever function that you're on you hit that start stop button until it stops flashing and then it'll start timer will start counting down so we will see you guys in about 47 hours and 56 minutes hey y'all yeah uh, back it's been about 48 hours since i put this uh top round stakes in here and one of the things my wife said she likes the best about this thing is it makes no noise at all <laughs> it's just sat here for 48 hours and kept the stakes at 135 degrees um that is one thing I wanted to let you know. Uh, you do have to put your meat on the rack that comes with this to keep it off of the bottom of the pan because since it heats from the bottom, you don't want the meat taking all the heat instead of the water. So you put it on that rack um, so that it keeps it off the bottom of the pan a little bit. But um, also I did notice that um, this does not... Uh, keep it right at the 135. It's probably about a one and a half degrees to two degrees off the water is to this temperature, um, which is not a big deal to me. Um, if you want to adjust it, um, one of the things you need to do to, just to make sure if you buy one of these, just uh, get a little instant read um, thermometer so you can test the, the water. You know, when it comes up to temp, just make sure you test the water. See, right now it's right at 135. So it's, um, I said, I noticed that it did fluctuate between one and a half to two degrees. So if that's the case, if you're looking for 135, just bump it up to 136 or 137 and then test it with your instant read if you're going to be that picky about it. But sometimes I'm not, sometimes I am. So that's all. All right, since this is all done, it's just been sitting here. Like I said, it doesn't make any noise, so it's worked fine so far. I'm going to go ahead and get the charcoal getting going, and then we're going to fire it up. And I forgot, guys. I'm up. pressed for time today, so I'm not going to fire up my charcoal grill. I'm going to actually sear it in the bottom of this pan. We're going to check that out, see how that works. So this will give me the opportunity to do this. My daughter has to go to a play practice tonight, so I don't have time to wait 15 or 20 minutes for the grill to heat up. So we're going to just gonna take the steaks out of here, and then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and sear them in this pan. So, all right, this is heated up pretty good. I put some little bit of oil in the bottom, it's smoking up pretty good. I got the top rounds out of the sous vide bag, patted them dry, put a little bit more of our beef rub on there, salt, pepper, garlic. I'm going to put them in there, sear them up. Right. Got a little sizzle there. Not quite as hot as if we're doing six or seven hundred, but seems to be sizzling quite enough. Go ahead and get the plate ready. And maybe get a little bit more oil. Yeah, it's not quite as hot as if it was out on the charcoal grill, but it's sitting right at 425. I've got a little bit of smoke, so these are thick enough that we should be able to get a nice good sear on them without them affecting the... Uh, done this too much. That's pretty convenient. So you just dump your water out and dry it out and put the pan back in and heat it up as hot as it'll go, which is 425. And let's give these a flip. I got a nice little crust on there. That's not bad for an all-in-one pan.
That's a pretty good crust. Well, so far, I can't complain about it. I mean, for what it is, it's a multi cooker, so it doesn't do one thing well, it does everything okay. So let's uh, finish these up searing and then we'll cut into one and see how it turned out. All right, guys. It's all seared up. That actually worked pretty good. Uh, seared it in that pan. Um, wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So we're going to go ahead and cut into one of these. Remember, these have been cooking for 48 hours. So it's really, I just barely have to bring my knife into that. So And pretty red from top to bottom. So it cooked for 135 for 48 hours. So it's got plenty of redness into it. Plenty tender. Just so you know, take a look. Just see. Still kind of juicy. Still real juicy. Nice and flavorful. Still got a little bit of that fat in there. But I'm going to go ahead and take a bite here. So you can see inside, this is going to cut and it doesn't really tell, but you can just pull this apart. I mean, this is top round, this is normally very tough, but I can just pull it apart with my fingers. Man, it is super juicy, super tender, and it is pretty good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and eat this stuff up. Thanks for joining me. Follow us again on Facebook. And you um, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and like it. Leave some comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video.